All right. Well, let's shout hallelujah and let's send it around the world. Let's do it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. All right. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. You, you sound like some warriors or something, you know, like a, like you're ready to go charge the hill. Isn't that awesome? We could say that. Can't you imagine that? We would just imagine if we were in a movie. We said that and now we were getting ready to take on all the giants. <laughs> We're like, hallelujah, and now we're just running through the hills. Come on, anybody? It's Faith Academy. I mean, aren't you, you, got, you got to see yourself. How many of y'all, you saw yourself running? Come on, running. The, you know, the, see, you got you to gotta visualize that. You know, then, you, and then if you just keep going with it, you'll start seeing yourself in slow motion, and you'll be the one jumping up, getting ready to take out the biggest giant. Anybody, or is that just me? Okay, all right, praise God. Well, hey, man, we can do it. Amen. We got to see it. See ourselves victorious. Amen. Let's pray before we get into the word tonight. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Church said, amen. amen. Praise God. All right. Look at your name and say, get your Bible out. Amen. So you know what? When, um, if you start to think about like your life in Christ and, and it's just really like life in general, uh, typically people do things, for example, like a work week. Most of the time, a typical work week is like Monday through Friday or something like that. If people have an ideal work week. Well, when you get up on Monday, uh, hopefully you're not thinking about Friday. I mean, when you, you know, when you get up on Monday, I'm talking about when you wake up Monday morning, if you already think of Friday, man, that could be a long week. But if you just can think about the day at hand, you get up and you say, mm, I got today, I got some stuff to do. And most of the time people have schedule, they got things to do on a particular day. Well, what happens is the days all just, man, they add up and soon enough it's Friday. Well, with your Christian walk, these days add up. And so here we are Wednesday. You guys ever notice how the Wednesdays come around? It seems like they come around so fast. Well, all these are adding up. And so we're excited about it and, and we're building and guess what? We're getting closer. We're getting closer to something. And so don't ever take any of the stuff, the things that you do for God. Don't ever take those for granted. They're never in vain. It's like every day you get up and pray. Well, guess what? That's a day adding. It's adding. And you say, man, I've been praying. Maybe I've been praying over this situation for three weeks. Well, guess what? That's three weeks that you've been praying. So it's adding. You're getting closer to something because it's all seed when it comes to the kingdom. Everything we do in the kingdom is seed and it has a harvest that's going to come at a set time. Now, God sets the time, but we position ourselves to receive it by continually doing the, the sowing, doing the just, yep, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. And let's just keep that going. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, we're going to preach tonight. It's Faith Academy. So obviously we're always preaching on faith. And I want to preach this message tonight entitled, He is God. He is God. And so, um, man, this is something that, you know, uh, you want to like, I think sometimes people can forget about that. You know what I mean? You, you get saved because maybe you needed some help or you're going through a rough situation or something like that. But it seems like people could be saved, but then they forget that he is God because they start putting their trust in other things or other people. Or they start doing all these things, trying to figure out everything else. And they forgot. Well, when they first started, you had to know he was God. There had to be a, a reason that you come to him and you ask for that help. Well, we must be constantly mindful of this. He is God. And so God, when you look at the um, origin of it in the Hebrew, it really uh, means creator and ruler of the world. Also ruler of Israel and ruler of the church. And so sometimes people forget that. God means, and that's Elohim, the supreme God, 
but creator and ruler. So sometimes people think right now that, okay, you know what? Man is in charge, you know, uh, because if God was in charge, all these things weren't happening. They wouldn't be happening this way and da, 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 da. I would say you got to be careful with that. If, if you're a person that kind of leans towards that, you got to be very careful because God never gave up his sovereign authority. Can I get an amen right here? God never gave up his supreme status. So when we're talking about supreme, that means there's nobody above him. And not now and not ever. Amen. And so as long as we are in the earth, we have we are Christians and we believe in a supreme God. Come on. Look at your name and say, my God is supreme. Man, we believe in a sovereign God. So I'm not going to be one that says, well, you know what? God is not in control right now. Well, what is he doing? He don't know how to do nothing but be in control. That's my question to people who say God is not in control. Well, what is he doing? Is he just taking a day off? Because he's God. He don't like his very nature is to be in control. He cannot. Uh, just be on the throne and just say, well, I'm going to let them, you know, do whatever they want. He is sovereign, man. And so he is the creator. Now, nobody got here without God. Amen. I mean, you start to think about these things. Nobody got here without God. It's all him. And so if we understand that he is Elohim, Elohim, the supreme God, and he's all powerful, all knowing. And I'm going to emphasize this again and in control. Look at your name and say God's in control. See, if you live your life this way, you may go through some difficult times and you may run into some bumps in the road or maybe even a wall in the road. But if you can back yourself up and say, well, God's in control. Oh, come on, somebody. You're going to be all right. But if you don't say that, if you can't say God's in control, then what are you going to do? You're going to figure out how to do whatever you got to do. And so you're going to operate in the limitations of yourself. And so when you say, because we can't pick and choose, we can't say, um, well, if God was in control, then you know what? Um, COVID would have never happened. Well, it doesn't mean God came up with COVID. I mean, obviously things were allowed. There is some evil out there too, but what this means is God's got the final say so. And so what this means is the devil will not win. He might think he's going to win and it's going to turn out the way he wants, but he forgot God is in control. And guess what? As long as God has a people in the earth that are willing to pray, you can't even pray to God the right way if you don't think he's in control. Because if you, if you do that, then now you're going to just decide what you choose to give to God. You say, well, God, I want you to help me with this, but I got that other part taken care of. That's not the way to live. And so he's all powerful and we've got to know this. And I believe that we can't please him. We can't have faith. We can't do all the things we need to do if we don't establish this fact. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews eleven six. Popular scripture. We go there all the time. But once again, you know what? Uh. Christians, adult Christians are no different than kids. And so with kids, you had to, how many times you have to tell your kids stuff when they're little, right? They, you, you don't just tell them something once and then they're just, they got it perfect. It's like the broken record theory. You got to keep telling them, reminding them, keep telling them. How many know that's us? Y'all in here with me. We need to, God has to keep telling us. He has to keep reminding us. Yeah. Come on, don't act like you You just say, well, no, I, I got it on the first try, Pastor. No, most of the time we go through something and then all of a sudden something else comes along and then we have to be reminded and then we have to back up and we have to go back into that place of believing. We're just like, you know, little kids. But it's good if you're like that because Jesus says, unless you be like little children, you can't enter in. And the reason is, is uh, adults, you know, they start to know it all. And when you know it all, that's when you're in trouble. Amen. And so 
He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. And so he that comes to God must believe that he is. So think about that. He is what? Well, he is the supreme God. I mean, you've got to be convinced of that. Oh, who is he? Oh, he's the supreme God. Well, if you, you know, if you live your life like that, then your approach to God is going to be a lot different. Come on, somebody. Your approach to God is going to be a lot different. I'm going to tell you tonight that God does not have to prove himself to us. Oh, people, they, there's a lot of people, man, they, they get mad at God. They say, how are you going to get mad at God? He's supreme. You, you don't get mad. You can't get mad at the supreme God. People don't understand he's the supreme God. So they get mad or they get frustrated or they decide they change the way they believe. They, you can't change nothing. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. You can't get away from dealing with him. You're going to have to deal with him now or you're going to deal with him later. There are people that say, I don't believe in God. Well, you're going to believe one day. You're going to believe one day. And so if I understand this, for he that comes to God must believe that he is. So if you stop right there, imagine this, you're coming into prayer, whether it be in a prayer closet or in your prayer space, wherever you may have, or in your car, you are who he that comes to God must believe that he is. So you, you got that thing settled. You're coming to him and you're like, first of all, you don't even have to say it anymore because you already know it. But you're coming to him with anything because you know who he is. And, and so just like we hear about stuff, what do people ask us to do? Pray. Pray to who? The supreme God. That's what people want you to do. They want you to pray. Why? Because, listen, people don't come here at the, to the church and tell us about stuff and, you know, just tell us, to. well, can you have good thoughts about my family member can you think good thoughts or send well wishes we don't send no well wishes we pray it come on somebody we pray to the supreme god who is able who can do anything but the only reason we can do that is because we know that he is who he said he is we're not going and listen he don't have to prove himself to us Amen. well if god if you do this then i'll serve you are you you're too late you messed up you can't give god an ultimatum if you do this then uh i'll start going to church again huh you cannot do that but we live in a society people forget who the supreme god is and so they think that they have the freedom to do as they wish and then we have a lot of false gods that are being elevated. But how many know they have no power? The power that they do have, it pales in comparison to the power of the Supreme God. And guess what? They all going to find out. They going to find out sooner or later that they have made a mistake. They have made the worst mistake they could possibly make. Man. Aren't you glad that you know he is God? That see, I said, Lord, you don't have to prove nothing to me. Oh, I know you've already done it. I know who you are. And so he does not have to prove himself to us. We must simply believe that he is. And so think about this. Like most people haven't seen God, you know, they, they haven't like even uh, Jesus, you know, coming in the you know, we know he was on the earth and, 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 you know, human form and all that. And there have been uh, testimonies of Jesus showing up to people and stuff like that. But man, there ain't no, well, I don't know of any testimonies of God, the father showing up. You know what I mean? That, that right there, we talking about a level of power. Now think about this, like power that, um, like, 
you can't come this close because I don't want you to die. <laughs> wow, what? So we have to have things in place so that his power doesn't consume us. Our God is a consuming fire. And so we have to have things in place. So Jesus had to come and pay that price just so that we can have a spiritual connection with God. But that is still not uh, causing us to be exempt from the magnitude of his power. And so what do I mean by that? If God just showed up in this church, this whole church would burn up. It would melt. It can't contain his. Y'all in here with me? Come on. Sometimes we don't understand. Now, yes, we know that we are the temple of the living God. And that's the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. But sometimes you got to back it all the way up to Genesis. Come on. To, for you to get an understanding. Sometimes you got to back it all the way up to Genesis. Uh, in the beginning, God said, and it was. You got to start looking at that God. Because sometimes people got to do that in order to develop some reverence for God. Because sometimes they... They don't pay enough attention to that supreme God and, and they don't understand his power. And so they kind of get over here and then they kind of, you know, play with it a little bit. Oh, no, he's very serious. And so we have these things in place. God doesn't want people just, you know, dropping dead. And so there's a buffer. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. We have this help. But I'm very mindful of that. I'm like, wow, he is supreme now. The way you're supposed to be living your Christian life. See, you're not supposed to forget about Father God. Amen. You're not supposed to forget about Father God. When you first start out in your Christian walk, maybe that's what happened for me. Everything was just Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You pray to Jesus. Everything's Jesus. But Jesus even says in the Gospels that there's coming a time where you won't ask me anything, but you'll ask the father in my name. And so what we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be communicating with the father in Jesus name. Yeah. Well, we can't forget about who he is. I mean, think about it. If we're supposed to be com communicating with father God, but you know, some people don't even know how to pray like that. And so sometimes people lose sight of father God and who he is. I'm telling you one thing. Father God is not the one that you you're going to be coming to playing with. Amen. Come on, you're not you're not going to be doing that. Uh, some some folks might play with Jesus a little bit because they remember some of the gospel stories and, you know, they they may get a little comfortable. But ain't nobody playing with Father God. When you start to understand him, see, that's why I tell people to go ahead and read that Old Testament. Yeah. You read that Old Testament, you start learning about Father God, you're like. Oh, oh, wow. He wasn't playing. There was no like, uh, hey, guys, you think I should do this? No. It was very decisive. And there was just stuff just had to happen. And there was some punishment. All kind of stuff went down because he wasn't playing. Well, I think that we should always keep that. Keep that within yourself, knowing that, oh, he's God. He is supreme. He does not have to prove himself to me, but we must simply believe that he is. And, and I believe it. It's like, Lord, I believe it. You don't have to prove nothing to me. Listen, I believe it and I'm, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. <laughs> yeah. Amen. It's not no negotiating. Amen. I it's like, you know, some kids, the parents, you know, they maybe raised them with, a, you know, a soft hand, I guess you could say, uh, for lack of better words. And so that kid, you know, runs the parent. You know, they, the, the parents find themselves negotiating with the kids. Amen. Come on. We, that wasn't in my generation. There was no negotiating. It was just, you know. There were no meetings like, hey, what do you think we should do? <laughs> then I never got invited in no meetings. No. It was just, it was, this is what you're going to do. Amen. That's it. Amen. You know what I mean? And we're in these generations now where parents are, you know, 
They even got commercials where people, I'm not eating. Yeah. No. And me and my wife are like, wow. <laughs> B team. <laughs> but I guess they're just trying to make it, you know, like that's normal. Well, see, that is stemming from a lack of reverence. Well, you think about the way our society has shifted. There's a lack of reverence. I guarantee you, if people, if kids don't respect adults, I guarantee you they don't respect Father God. That's a clear indication. If, if children are in the place today where they run everything and uh, they can mess around and call the police on their parents and they can do all this stuff, oh, they don't respect God. Amen. They don't respect authority. And so what's going to happen? They just grown up in this freelancing world thinking that they can do whatever they want. And look at how things have deteriorated over the years. You know, it was a time where even the Bible was in school. That was a time where, you know what, you can get a paddling at school. You know, there was some things in place, some structure. Oh, and look how that's gone away. Oh, but now what? So now you don't have to worry about paddling. You have to worry about getting shot. Hmm. What's worse? Kids get paddled at school or kids bring guns to school. You know what I mean? That, that's, some, that's some crazy stuff. I still remember this. When I used to be a probation officer, I had to, to I put me on this shift where I had to watch this kid and take him to the hospital. He broke his arm in there playing football. We were in the juvenile hall. But this boy killed his mom, murdered her with a baseball bat. I'm thinking, I don't, like, what? And he just looked like, he looked like, man, like a, one of Beaver Cleaver's friends. You know what I mean? He just looked just like one of those. You would never think he did that. But murdered his mom with a baseball bat. So no reverence. No care for, for life. Surely there was no fear of the Lord there. And so these are the things that we end up having to deal with because we stray away. Well, think about church. Think about church when there's no more reverence anymore. There's no more. Everything is so loose. Nobody cares. And so now you can't determine is it church or is it what is it? Well, all the reverences, see, the, the enemy is trying to take the reverence away. And then that way, um, because he knows that if we don't reverence God, we, we don't get God's power. We, we get something else. We might get entertained when we go to church. We might uh, make some friends, but we don't get the power of Father God. And so, therefore, you have people that are going to churches all across America that are unchanged. They're not changed at all. They just have a different thing to do on a Sunday. And in most cases, it's, it's a scheduled out, you know, not too long. They can fit it in and move right on. But if we get back to this where we said, well, OK, God don't have to prove anything to me. I'm just going to reverence him because he's God. Well, if we simply believe that he is this belief gives us access to his ability. Well, and that's what this faith is all about. And so Mark 10, 27, you guys know this, but let's look over there. See, we want to have access to God's ability. We want to, how many of y'all want to have access to the supernatural? Amen. I mean, are, how, how many of you want like God to do some things that you hadn't even considered? I'm not, you didn't even think of it happening like that. You, in your Man, in your wildest dreams, come on, somebody, Ephesians 3.20, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can possibly ask or think according to the power that works in us. Well, we need to know that he is God. We cannot question that. We cannot uh, demote God in our own minds. We have to reverence him. Man, he's God. So you got to be in awe of him. If you believe he's supreme, like he said he is, you're not going to play with him. Amen? Come on, you're not going to play with him. You're not going to say you got God and then go live, live like a heathen. Come on, somebody. That's somebody that's playing. That's it. That's somebody that really don't believe in the supreme God. Come on, somebody. People that commit sins like that, they don't believe in the supreme God. They forgot that he is the God that can snatch your breath. 
just like on spot, just bam, snatch it and have you there. Just can't breathe. They forgot about that. Amen. But he's that same God. He's the same God that showed up on Abimelech. Remember, he was in a, in a dream and Abimelech had taken Sarah to try to king. He was the king, but he took Sarah, wanted to take her for himself. And uh, the word came to him quickly. You're but a dead man. Yes, yes. Huh? I mean, no, that gets somebody's attention. Oh, you but a dead man. Woo. Amen. And then, he, you know, he says, I am the Lord. I change not. So what do you guys think is going on? Do you think he's no longer doing those type of things? Or is he, you know, I mean, you can get on God's good side and have God now. He'll just send the angels, you know. He'll send the angels to say this stuff. Because once again, if he shows up, everything's going to just melt. His power's too great. But how many know they'll get the message? <laughs> And they'll know they better leave you alone. Well, Mark 10, 27, Jesus looking upon them said, with men, it's impossible, but not with God. So we're talking about something that's impossible. We're talking about, you know, uh, the man, the, the going through the eye of the needle. That's what he's talking about in this text of scripture. But it wasn't like a camel going through the eye of the needle, like a real little needle. That needle was a little entry inside the city, but it was like hidden. So if the travelers came and the gate was closed, well, they had a little sneak side gate, but that was very difficult because the camel had to get down and actually crawl. Well, you can just imagine that that's going to be tough to get a camel to crawl. So you had to take all this stuff off. Now the camel's got to crawl through that. And so, but what he's saying, he's, he's making something very clear. It's not just that he's saying that with man, it's impossible, but not with God, but with God, all things are possible. And so you could think of something that may be difficult and you could say, well, with man, oh, come on, somebody. We're in the right church tonight. With man, see, it's impossible for you to wake up in the morning and all your debts are paid. Come on, somebody. Anybody in here with me? Come on. It, it's for with man. It's impossible for you to wake up and go check your bank account. And you've gotten over two hundred thousand dollars deposited. Uh, man, I might not be at the right church. I might not be at the right church, man. Huh? I'm talking about you just, you know, you don't have nothing to do with it. You just wake up in the morning and you got. Oh, wait, what? Huh? 200,000. What? Say what? With man, hmm? it's impossible. But not with God. For with God, how many things are possible? See, so what we need to do is get in the flow of God. We, we don't need to. See, I think we are missing out on God's power because we, we just put God in our flow. We say, well, this is the way we want to flow, God. So we want to flow this way. And what do we do? Uh, pray. We want to pray that God will jump in our flow. How I many know you need to get out of your flow and get in his flow? Come on. You need to get in his flow because your flow is limited. You, you don't even know. How, listen, God is saying, I'm going to help you. But you don't even know how to pray high enough for me to help you. Your situation is so low, you don't even know how to pray high enough. Y'all in here with me. You don't even know how to listen. Your prayers are limited. Now, you want me to get in your flow. Lord, bless me here. Lord, give me this. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. But then God says. I'm the supreme God. So I even know what's better for you than what you think you know. Amen. So you need to get in my flow. That's when the supernatural stuff happens. How many of y'all would like to just be living that type of life of faith where you're just going along? Oh, Lord, what we got today? Praise God. Oh, wow, that's awesome. I never even thought about that, but I'll take it. Oh, praise God, just going along. And then all this goodness just showing up. Yeah. Yeah. 
See, we, we live in a time now where we are driven in our prayers and we're praying for stuff to happen. We're trying to move God. We're trying to, Lord, I just want you to, you know, I pray that you would do this. And it's OK to pray for some things. That's that's all right. But I'm telling you, there's a higher level. There's a higher level than just praying for your desires or the things that you want to be fixed. There's a whole nother level where you just saying, Lord, nevertheless. Oh, come on, somebody. Not my will, but thy will be done. See, some people think that that's a cop out. That's just you giving up on all your dreams. No, your dreams aren't even high enough. I mean, what? God takes he, it is his. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, but also he delights in giving you the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Fear not my little flock, I think it's Luke 12 something, but fear not my little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so, man, that's his, he wants to give us this stuff, but we've got to be those people that say, you know what, I'm more interested in the perfect will of God and me just going ahead and reverencing him and not putting him in my little box because he could take this a lot further than where I can go. Amen. Amen. He can take this a lot further than where I can go. He can do way more than I can, but I need to know that he's God. And, and I have to come to this conclusion that he's not riding along with me. Come on. Sometimes we think God's riding along with me. Come on, God. We're going to go. We're going to go to church. We're going to go to church tonight, God. Like, really? Yeah, come on. Come on. Get in the back seat. Come on, get in the back seat. I'm, we, people, oh, we, people doing that. They decide what they want to do. People decide where they want to go, when they're going to do it. And uh-uh. God is supreme. He says, no, I, I'm not going with you. You are going with me. And I'm already where I'm going. <laughs> so you need to just be still and know that I'm God. This is the scripture I was thinking about, Luke 12, 32. And so this is God's plan, God's desire. He says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So what I need to do is I need to figure out how to get in God's flow. I need to get out of his way. I need to come to the conclusion that, oh, no, he, God don't have to prove nothing to me. And once again, some people think that's a cop out. Well, we say, well, you know, whatever the Lord's will is. Now, there are certain things where you just know it's his will. You know, it's his will for you to be healed. So you just claim your healing. You just know it's in. But there are other things that you might need clarity on. You know, Lord, should I buy this house? Should I move over here? Should I do this? You got to be in his flow. That way, it's all blessings. Everything about it's going to be good. And so now when you consider this, back to our, our scripture in Mark 10, 27, with man, it may be impossible. So we may have some situations that seem like, you know, impossible, difficult, whatever. But we've got to go ahead and establish where we are standing. We need to bring that into the equation. Okay. Yeah. I've gathered a few facts here and it looks a little difficult. But then you got to be real quick to say with man. It's impossible. But not with God. For with God, how many things? So so what does that mean? Like what? What does it mean when you are at the place of your life where you say all things are possible? I mean, what what is that? What's excluded from that? You know what I'm saying? What you're just walking around this life and you're like, you see why we should have so much peace. The problem is Christians say it, but don't believe it. Because if you believe it, you would be man. You'd be running around here, man, like jello, just flowing, just just. Man, well, people get uptight. They get themselves in situations where, oh, I, I got a lot of pressure. You, you got pressure? What, what, you, what you got pressure for? 
If you got pressure, you must be in charge. If you are under pressure, you must be responsible for yourself. But when you say, I don't have any pressure. You know what I mean? Like there's people that, I mean, think about it. Jesus was asleep on the boat. The storm was going all over the place. He was asleep. Why do you think he was asleep? He was connected to the supreme God. He knew that nothing can take him out. What if you knew that? What if you just, I'm just resting. Well, well, how can you be resting in the midst of a tough situation? Tough? Tough tough for who? I know know that this is easier said than done. Because we do have to go through things in life, you know. But if we can just quickly settle this within ourselves, put it off, take it away from your, yourself and look at the scripture with man, it's impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things. So if you, if you go to sleep tonight and you got something on your mind, just quickly say, with man, it's impossible, but not with God, for with God, all things are possible. And so what God wants us to do is rest, Amen. be at peace. Uh, even if something is not resolved, what does that really mean to you? If you're in control, it means everything. Because you're not going to be able to rest until it's fixed. But if you're not in control, I mean, oh, you'll rest right through it. And then you'll give God a praise when it's resolved. And you know what's good about God is he'll do stuff at the right time. Oh, come on, man. I'm just trying to help you guys. He'll do it at the right time. You thought the right time already passed. But you don't know what he knows. See, I've I've experienced this type of stuff in my life where things, I wanted them to work out just so at this time and it didn't. But then later it was greater. It was much better. There was more that was to my benefit. But you miss all of that if you don't just say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm going to surrender to this thing. And then now you get God's ways. I'm giving you some bonus scriptures. Go to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 14. This is just a quick one. Um, but the, it, it, seems like, it seems like the longer I live in this earth, the more uh, I realize how powerless I am compared to God. With each day, the longer I do this thing, the longer I stay in this Christianity, I realize I have no power compared to his. And so he says here, uh, Ecclesiastes 3.14, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. See that? Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God does it so that men should fear before him. Look at that. God is, is looking to do some great things. I want to look at this in the Amplified. These are just bonus. Amplified classic on this one too. I'll just read it out. And I know whatever God does, it endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. And God does it so that men will reverently fear him revere and worship him knowing that he is boy see that's i think that we would have i don't know man maybe even more of a respect in the earth for god if even just his church would grab a hold of some of this so i don't want what i can do i want what god will do that's what i want i have to learn that even for this church i have to settle myself sometimes because there is a place for having faith 
And there is a place for speaking things by faith. But there's another place for being still and knowing that he is God. There's another place for saying, I know that what God does, it shall be forever. Because if I do it, I mean, no, it might last for a couple months. Come on, have you ever been there in your life where you fix something and you thought it was fixed and it wasn't even fixed? Because that's what you could do. But when God gets in there doing it, can't nobody say nothing about it. And that's why when God gives you something, can't nobody take it. You just got to know that it was God that gave it to you. You got to be convinced that, oh, no, God gave me this. And the way you do this is recognizing that he is God. Amen. And once again, when we see him like this, now we can enter in and we can be given access to his ability. And so think about this. If you are in your life and you are able to assess your ability, how many of y'all can be honest with yourself? You know what you can do and you know what you can't do. I mean, that's if you're not there, you need to get there. That's going to save you a lot of headaches, man. If you realize, oh, no, no, I don't know what I'm doing right here. Because some people, they don't know what they're doing, but they keep trying. I think you need to just realize real quick, I don't have this. So think about this. If you're going into something and now you're assessing your ability and you may be able to do some of it or you start thinking, okay, I can handle this. Okay, okay, I think I got it. And then you may have some I would call it a false sense of security where you may feel like I, I can handle this I, I've learned how to do this or that or you go into the situation where you say I ain't got this Lord <laughs> it's gonna be you if you don't do it we ain't gonna make it through this one right. now how many of you would choose that path versus the other one where you say well I've sized it up I know a little bit about it. I got some skills in this area. Okay, I'll take door number one. Then you got door number two. And door number two is, I don't know nothing, Lord. I ain't going to make it. But then God says, I got you. Let's go through number two. What door are you going through? See, a lot of people go through number one. And then what they do, y'all ready for this? This is, what, this is just people. They go through number one and they say, come on, God. You, huh? Why? Because door number one makes sense. They got the skill set. They, OK, I know a little bit about that. I've done my research. I've done. Uh, come on, God. God is like. Uh, uh That's not how I do it. Amen. He you are much better when it comes to God. You are much better when you know less. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's when he starts to, because when you are weak, he is strong. That's when he said, I've experienced him do this in my life. There's been stuff, even in business and all this stuff, just didn't have it. Relied on him and he somehow worked it out. And he is still doing this today. And so when you believe that he is God, you'll do whatever he tells you. Even if it doesn't make sense. Come on. Sometimes God will tell you something that didn't make sense or maybe it wasn't what you wanted to hear. But if you believe that he is God, then now you will do whatever he tells you. Even if it makes no sense. Go to Joshua. We know Joshua was a man that believed that God was God. Amen. And we even know. Um, we know that Joshua was a man that didn't question God. Amen. See. It's it's about knowing that he is God, but then just do what he tells you and don't question him. And so we know, and you don't have to turn back there, but we know in Numbers, Numbers 13, Joshua and Caleb, they went in there and they knew who God was. And so as a result, they believed that they would get the victory just like God said. But they happened to have 10 other people who did not believe. So when you know that he is God, 
When you believe that he is God, you will do whatever he tells you to do, even if it makes no sense. Amen. Think about that. There have been so many testimonies. God have said to people do stuff and and didn't make any sense and they did it. Then they got a result. Amen. They got a result that was beneficial to them. But it's you got to just know that he is God and you got to be humbly dependent because he may have you say some that you would not think to say that in your own power. But because you're dependent upon him. You'll just do it. Right. We're going to talk about Jericho, but I know you guys remember this. I never forget it, but I heard it recently. And that's probably why it's still in my mind. But the man who uh, I think it was Bill Winston's church, but the man who had he was in the church. He had bad credit and he wanted to get a car. He wanted to get a new car. So I'm going to go get that new car. So he went down there, picked out the car and they sat down and kind of do the deal. And they said, oh. Sir, we, we can't help you. Because <laughs> his credit was terrible. I said, we have nothing here for you. And then the man said, okay, hold on. Then he got his wife and the Lord told him, go walk around that car seven times. <laughs> this is true. He went over there, walked around the car seven times, came back and he said, okay, now check it again. And the man went up in there and checked. He said, wait, hold on. What? Wait. What's your social security number? Let me get that. I must have. And all, his, his credit got changed. Come on, somebody. He went from, we have nothing for you. Now, how many know it does not make any sense to get up and walk around? What do you think these people were saying? He's in a car dealership walking around a car seven times. What do you think these people are saying? See, you can learn stuff like that. Me and my wife, we, we learned some of this stuff. And we put it into play. We want us. We wanted a house. And so we said, man, this time we were in San Diego. But so at that time we went to some new houses down in, um, I don't know, East Lake or somewhere down south of San Diego. And so what do we do? And you know what was messed up? You know, the devil's always going to try to get you to, you know, abandon your faith mission. I mean, you, know, you get on a faith mission and you get excited about something. And the devil tries to throw something in there to mess you up. Make you feel like you're dumb for doing it. So we go to these houses, model houses, and go up in there. First thing the person does, they must have just gave us an eye check. So, oh, no, you, you have to make at least this much to even qualify. For, they didn't even ask how much we make, but they just assumed we don't qualify. And so we got discouraged. Right at the front, right? You know, you go to these model homes and you got to go through the first person and then get to the rest of them. So we got discouraged right at the entrance. Well, you don't, you know, you got to at least make this much, six figures or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But they, they didn't ask to see no documents. They just looked at us. And I guess we must have been looking broke that day or something. I don't know. I don't remember what we were wearing, but obviously we must have been looking broke. But guess what? We still went on in there. We still let them get the papers, whatever. And we still went on, went through with it. And God told us to walk around and do all that stuff. And you know how they got them cameras in model homes and stuff. And so, you know, we were a little nervous because we were new to all this. But man, we got to walking around praying and claiming stuff and all this type of stuff. And even walked around the outside of the house. And we claimed it. So we left out of there and we was like, all right, you have a good day. <laughs> we did our business. Now, God ended up blessing us with a house that was very similar to that house we walked around. It just happened to be up here. But I believe that act of faith is what jump started it. Us doing something that did not make sense. When you were told at the door, it don't look like you're going to qualify for this one. But guess what? We still did our faith walk. We still did what we were supposed to do. And guess what? We got our first house that we had up here. And so when you believe that he's God, you'll do whatever he tells you. Amen. Sometimes he's going to tell you to do some stuff that may not make sense. So in Joshua chapter six, verse one, we see what's going on here. Now, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. So what this means is, man, 
the record of what God was doing for the children of Israel was spreading. And so Jericho was a, a, a fortress, man. They had that thing so fortified, but they were scared of the children of Israel because they knew. That's what Rahab said. We all scared up in here, man. We heard about what your God is doing. See, but some of the people didn't even believe that. Some of the people that God was doing the stuff for, they weren't even believing it. But it doesn't take everybody. It just at least takes a couple. You at least got to have one person that says, we're going to obey God. And we're going to do whatever he tells us. And that doesn't matter. If it doesn't make any sense, we're going to do it anyway. And so it was shut up. So it was a fortress. So the walls were so thick that they would have chariot races on top of the walls. So that's pretty thick. Rahab's house was in the walls. So you guys understand this is this is no small feat. None went out and none came in. Next verse. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thy hand Jericho. Hmm. Now, what do you think, Joshua, if he was not one that was convinced that God is God? He would have said, it don't look like you gave it to me. I'm looking at a wall. You talking about you gave it to me. See, God speaks what is already done. Because he's not trying to figure out how to do it. He's just trying to get some people that to believe him. And so the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Next verse. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they have made a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Hmm. So now these are instructions that God is giving to Joshua. Does that, does this make any sense at all? You mean we're going to walk all the way around? Because first of all, some people would have been complaining about that. Man, you mean we got to walk seven times in one day? Lord, you know how long that is? See, people will complain when God's trying to set them up. Yes. Come on. He's trying to set them up for a supernatural miracle. God might tell you, man, he might tell you, sow some money, do this, do that. And then people complain, oh, I don't want to. And God's trying to get you into. Huh? He's trying to get you into the supernatural. Where with man... It's impossible, but not with God, but with God, all things are possible. That's how financial miracles come. A lot of times God will tell you to sow some financial seed. Well, people say, I'm going to go sow some seed. I need some money. Because you need money from my account. <laughs> That's what he's trying to tell you. You need money from my account. You need some super on your natural. But now these, these things don't make sense because in the world it's one plus one, it's two. And people are stuck right there. And so God will tell you some stuff that don't make no sense. It ain't going to make sense. But it, it could be just what you needed for that supernatural breakthrough. Amen. And so uh, now just skip up to verse 10. So he tells Joshua this. He gives him these instructions. Don't make sense, but he's, he's, Joshua is a man that believes that God is who he said he is. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, you should not shout nor make any noise. So now he's prepping this army of people. He's prepping them to obey these commands that were given to him by God. And so they're doing it and he's letting them know, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, neither shall 
a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he's making it clear. We're going to follow these instructions to a T. Next verse. I mean, uh, excuse me, verse 15. And so they are following this, right? They're following these instructions. And there was, you know, a lot of complainers in the camp and all that, which there's always going to be that. But it doesn't matter. As long as you are just simply doing what God said. That's the way I'm always going to be as a pastor of this church. I don't care if everybody else says, I don't like that. Well, I don't care if you like it or not. Because I'm going to do what God said. That's it. I'm not having no uh, committee of people trying to tell me and figure out what God's saying. No, I'm not doing that. We're going to do what God said to do. And then we're going to get God's blessing. That's when pastors get themselves in trouble trying to get all this wise counsel. You need to be doing some wise praying. And the wise God will talk to you and tell you what decisions that need to be made. Amen. And so and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they can pass the city seven times. So they obeyed. And then now skip down to verse 20. And so we're seeing that, you know, they did something that made no sense. But guess what? They got something that made no sense. Come on, somebody. See, you've got to be willing to do something that makes no sense if you want a result that makes no sense. It ain't gonna, when you go tell somebody what God did for you, there are going to be people that say, that cannot be. And you're going to say, oh, it is. But you got to be willing to do something that ain't in their playbook. Come on, somebody. Don't, it ain't in their playbook. They don't have the way for you to get to what God is going to give you. God's got it. But you got to know he's God. And you got to be willing to because he'll use the foolish things to confound the wise. You got to be willing to they can call me foolish in this world, but I'm going to get some supernatural results. And that's what we need to be looking for. So the people shouted. Now they've obeyed. They shouted and the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall Fell down, how to fall? Flat. So this is not even like they portray it in the little children's books. It wasn't a bunch of rubble. When you study it, it says they fell down flat to where as if they were never there. So you take a wall that's big enough for them to run chariot races on and it just dis disappears. Why? Because that's what God said. How many know God is not a man that he will lie? Yeah. Neither the son of man that he will repent. If he said it, it's going to happen. But we've got to be a people to say, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to believe God. And that's where I'm encouraging everyone to stay. I want you to stay in that place, regardless of what kind of difficulty you may be facing, regardless of what's going on in our world today. Be at that place where you say, oh, no, I know he's God. I may not know how to do everything, but I do know this. He's God and he's sovereign and he does not need my help. He don't need the government's help. Come on, somebody. He don't need your family's help. He don't need nobody's help. We need to understand he is God. He's sovereign. He's on the throne. His power has not diminished. He has not lost anything. And as long as we be that people that say, I'm going to stay with him. I'm going to stay with him because that's what he tells me. He says, that, you know, uh, Mark 9, 23. If thou canst believe. All things are possible. Let's get into the supernatural. Let's be a people that expect miracles, signs and wonders. Let's be a people that expect God to do something. Even if man says it can't, let's be a people that start expecting folks to get healed. Like we prayed of stage four cancer. The stages don't matter to God. Come on, let's start believing that God will supernaturally provide. Come on, somebody. Heavenly finances. How many of y'all can believe heavenly finances can come into your life? 
I'm talking about accounts can shift and all kind of stuff can change for you. God is not limited. Amen. We God is. not. Listen, you can wake up in the morning and everything is better. Because late in the midnight hour, God could turn that thing around. But all this will happen if we say, oh, I, he's God. He is God. And I'm going to trust him. And I'm not trying to put God in my flow. Mm -mm. Hey, God, I got some ideas. No, get rid of those. I don't need your ideas. I got everything. This is it. And if we do that, we would be in line for greater. I'm believing, man. I'm believing for some supernatural stuff. I'm telling you that right now. I'm, I'm expecting somebody to tell me God did something miraculous because I know it's coming. Amen. I know it's right there on the horizon. I'm believing for this. I'm believing for some stuff to manifest. It's manifesting for the church. It's manifesting for our families. It's manifesting because we believe that he is God. Amen. Give the Lord one more hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Let's close in prayer tonight. Amen. Now you see why it's important. It's important to come to church or tune in because, boy, you get a faith supercharged on a Wednesday. Amen. Right there when the devil try to get you discouraged, he try to get you to think, oh, man, this is. Oh, no. We've been reminded. Amen. He is God. Amen. He is the supreme God. He is the undefeated God. He is the God that can do everything and nothing is too hard for him. And there is not a force that can touch him or stop him. Amen. And as long as we stay with him, whoo, how many of y'all feel that power under the shadow of the almighty? Amen. I'm telling you, I'm going to stay with God. Amen. I'm not going to step away. I'm not going to inch my way out. I'm staying right there yeah. under the shadow of the almighty. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for meeting us here tonight. We thank you for the word that went forth in this place. We thank you that we can trust you. Oh, you are a sovereign. You are the most powerful God, a sovereign God. We thank you, Lord, that if we surrender, you will work things out. Even things that we don't have an idea of how to fix them, we come to you as the supreme God and we lay everything down at your feet every care every concern because we know that you are God oh we thank you Jesus we thank you that you have paid that price so that we can have a relationship with the supreme God maybe you're watching us right now or listening to this at another time and you don't know God. You've never entered into this. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus is the way in. He is the way. He says that no man comes unto the Father but by me. And so I want to invite you into this family. And you just come on in through Jesus. If that's you and you're there and you're ready to enter into this relationship, I want you to repeat this prayer with all of us. Church, let's say it together. Or let's repeat this after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there, amen. If you believe it, all things are possible. He will do it. And you'll be walking in all those great things that you believe God for. Amen. Amen. The best is yet ahead. Let's stay excited about it. Let's stand to our feet. Let's get ready to walk out of here in power tonight. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus. I ask that you bless everyone that is here. Strengthen them and encourage them. Everyone that is home or listening at another time. Bless them. And we make a pledge to you, Lord, that we would continue to look to you as the supreme God. You are in control. And we humbly submit to your perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen.